Before we get to the movie, I want to talk about a phrase that we've been hearing our entire life. I can't watch that scary movie because it will give me nightmares. Mm -hmm. I always interpreted this as... The nightmare of your life is, is pipes. the pipes. Yes. Yes, in the next room. I'll just do this. They won't notice the other noise. They'll just think I'm rude. <laughs> I always interpreted this as, I can't watch that scary movie because I won't be able to sleep. Because mm -hmm. that's what happens to me. I've never actually gotten a nightmare from a movie until a few nights ago. Oh, really? And I think it was because I watched the scary movie right before going to bed. Took the fantasy into, into dream time, yes. yes. The movie was Children of the Corn. <laughs> the one with Linda Hamilton? Yeah, yeah. And I dreamed that I was in a deserted corn town mm -hmm. and being menaced by this... Monster. He, I've been having these dreams about dirt-covered people. Yeah. Or people that are made of dirt. And they're just kind of vaguely threatening. I don't know what that means. I think I went, Whoo! And woke myself up. Mm. When I was a kid, Children of the Corn was terrifying. Mm -hmm. As an adult, not so much. I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to The Basement. It's November, and the chill autumn winds are blowing all over our lives. It's cold, but I'm not ready for summer to be over yet. And that's why I'm taking you to a beach party! <laughs> oh, yes! Released in 1963, starring Bob Cummings, Annette Funicello, Basement alum Frankie Avalon, Maury Amsterdam, Dick Dale, and his Deltones, Beach Party also features Dorothy Malone, who won a Best Supporting Actress Oscar in 1956 for her role in Douglas Sirk's Written on the Wind. How long did it take her to get around to this? Uh, seven years. Okay. I guess Oscar didn't mean so much back then. Still doesn't mean all that much. Yeah, you know, that's true. It's like Jared Leto. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> He's got right. an Oscar. I forgot that he even won that. With Beach Party, Roger Corman's American International Pictures created a genre, the Beach Party movie, a sort of benign teen exploitation film. In the words of director William Asher, the key to these pictures is lots of flesh, but no sex. It's all good, clean fun, no hearts are broken, and virginity prevails. Oh, thank God. AIP continued to return to the beach in the years to come with such films as Muscle Beach Party, Bikini Beach, Beach Blanket Bingo, and How to Stuff a Wild Bikini. You stuff it with a gal. I, I guess so. Or a scarecrow. Wizard of Oz 2. <laughs> Back to the beach. <laughs> I don't want to come out of the cabana. My bathing suit's too revealing. <laughs> if you want to have any chance of having fun at the beach, you'd better take along today's gift. Ooh. I wonder what it is. It wouldn't fit in the box. Just... <laughs> It's a frisbee! The Fats Flyer. Yes. Fats is apparently a gorilla who was a mascot for Showbiz Pizza. The Chuck E. Cheese knockoff? Cheese I think Chuck E. Cheese. Cheese was the knockoff of Showbiz. There is yet to be an SPCU, a Showbiz Pizza Cinematic Universe, but once they start cranking out those movies, I'm sure that they will get an A-list actor to play Fats. I'm thinking Jonah Hill. Wax up your boards and put on your shorts and come on over to the old leather couch where sun and fun prevails as well as virginity, and we are going to watch Beach Party. <laughs> Normally I can't really tell what faces I'm making, but I think I can tell the face I've made. <laughs> What a straightforward name. Leaves nothing to the imagination. No, no mystery. With how to stuff a wild bikini, questions come on. <laughs> beach party begins with a song. Vacation is here. Beach party tonight. It's good to know that there are still beach parties in year zero. <laughs> Annette was around 20 years old at this point. She looked roughly 42. <laughs> it's the hair I'm blaming. They're in love. You know, the only thing I've studied this semester is you. They're taking away my scholarship. They've rented a nice house on the beach. They've got it all to themselves. Or so they think. Dolores got some cold feet at the last minute about being alone with Frankie. Deadhead, what are you doing here? Sleeping. Deadhead. She invited all their friends to come and stay at the house with them. The sun is shining. The tide is up. It's time for some surfing. It looked like someone had a laptop back there. Hello there. See, this is a laptop. Whoa, that's a laptop. And for some singing about surfing. 
my secret surfing spot where only I know the Grammys and the who does never go. Never go. I said the Grammys and the who does never go. Never go. I said the Grammys and the who does never go. Never go. Come so on. This is a, oh, sorry. I'm <laughs> my secret surfing spot where only I know Never go. The Grammys and the who does never go. Never go. And you know who can surf too? Frankie. He just can't. Frank. He just can't surf in his surfing footage. <laughs> They're being watched. We have found the spy by Dr. Robert Sutwell. He's studying biological development in teenagers, and he might write a book about it. In the meantime, he has to watch them and listen to them constantly. Marianne is his research assistant. Take a look, please. Oh, not me. I blush easily. I'm a Philadelphia girl. Sure. <laughs> it's my new book. Oh, by the way, how do you like this title? How to Stuff a Wild Bikini. <laughs> Too esoteric? I've got a shorter title. Beach Party. Rhonda, what are you doing? Watch, they come all unhinged. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> wipe out. Frankie is mad at Dolores for inviting all these people over and ruining their nice weekend alone. You're smart, you're dumb. He's right. Tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> he wants to break up with her, but he can't because he's in love with her. Let's go to Big Daddy's tonight. There's that foreign waitress, Ava, and I'll fool around with her and I'll make Dolores jealous. There's a bongo session happening at Big Daddy's. I can dig it. All the kids are there. And now... I will play the exact same song. A poem. Oh, no. By our beloved... Frank O'Hara. Cappy Kaplan! A poem. <laughs> T is for Dallas. I may not go there. A is for... Assassination. <laughs> Have we ingested LSD without knowing it? Did the, how did that happen? Was it in the coffee? Dick Dale and his gang of deltones sing a little song about what else? Surfing. I'm surfing, surfing, swinging and surfing. Yeah, I'm surfing. Yeah, I'm surfing. The title of this song, oddly enough, Beach Volleyball. <laughs> Maybe when you take a break, we could kind of dance a little, huh? Oh, yes. I, I break very soon. Perhaps on my break we can roll, 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 roll in the hay. hay. Bikers show up. They're the rats. Haunted bike. <laughs> the bit's still going. They're led by Eric Von Zippa. And he's there to cause trouble. Eric Von Zipper had a son. And when that son grew into te his teenage years in the 80s, he changed his name to Eric Von Velcro. Dr. Sutwell arrives. Frankie sings a song. Keep a moving and a grooving. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. Keep a jumping and a stomping. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. They're all doing the shimmy shake. Never let it drop. Single degree. Keep saying what you're saying. Don't stop now. Uh, uh, uh. And he dances with multiple ladies. Dolores sees this and she doesn't like it one bit. Don't stop now. Okay, stop now. Don't stop now. No, stop. Don't stop now. Stop now. Hey. Oh. oh, please excuse me. Your groping is obviously my fault. <laughs> Girls fall for Eric Von Zipper. I... Eric Von Zipper is more than five decades old. <laughs> I'm sorry to intrude, but you're molesting this young lady. Pardon me. Are you? Do you want to make something of it? Uh... I am cyborg. <laughs> Excuse me. Would you? He's not wearing a wire. He's wearing a telegraph. <laughs> It's a little trick he knows how to do. It's a Himalayan time suspension. Makes you a statue for a little while. And it's good for basic humor purposes. <laughs> Mammy! <laughs> Dolores is so impressed, she leaves with the doctor. Frankie sees this and boy is he jealous! Why is she dressed like she's about to fight James Bond? <laughs> he looks like Orville Redenbacher gone feral. <laughs> the next day, Dolores shows up. She has stuffed the hell out of that wild bikini. Actually, it's a very tame bikini. Hey, Ava. Hi, 
I look for Frankie. I dress like Devo on my head. Oh, Frankie! I've just arrived from your Fellini movie. <laughs> Wow, that woman was just spending 1963 waiting around for Marilyn Monroe to die. It's like, I'm ready to take over as soon as she's gone. I want to go to the beach. She looks at his beach attire and is not impressed. The guys see this old freak and they laugh at him because he's funny. If he had a twin, he'd make a good golf drop. <laughs> hey, daddy-o, you ever try surfing? I've observed the surfing thing and I think I'll give it a try. Perhaps I can use my mathematics to know how to surf. He does some quick calculations. I'm ready. But the surfing is not going well. I forgot to carry the two. Once he carries that two, he becomes an expert surfer. Dolores and Frankie make up. But then Ava shows up and wrecks it. What I'm trying to oh, say is... I want to hear you say it again. Say what, Ava? How oh, he loves me. Heil Hitler. And they're fighting again. Come on, let's go. Ava wins again. <laughs> Oh, sing a sad duet with yourself in the mirror. Treat him nicely. The movie Listen to Me. <laughs> Treat him gently. Bluer than velvet was, was the, the night. night. There's going to be a campfire on the beach that night. And so the doc decides to put on a crazy outfit and go out and hang out with the kids. I'm so We just can't get that mediocre song out of our heads. Who gave you the hat? Lily Dashay? <laughs> no, no, no. Who's Lily Dashay? <laughs> Robert, I love being you. And then all the kids pair up, and they go off into the darkness. Sex on the beach. Discreetly hidden by surfboards. Not sure virginity prevails after that scene's over. Now, finally, we find out something about Marianne. Maybe? Give us some of that Oscar-winning award acting. <laughs> Robert, you know I like you. They're not in the same shot. What's going on here? <laughs> They're in Scarlett Johansson's Beneath the Skin room. <laughs> that beard, it's gotta go. None of the kids have beards like that. Here's a shaver. And when I come back, I want to see no beard. The doctor shaves his beard. Robert, you look positively... Somehow older. Now with your pig bristles gone, even you are beginning to feel the thrill of the beach. The thrill of the beach. That should have been the title of the movie. <laughs> the bikers return. They want revenge on the doctor. I wish at this point the wild angels would show up from their American International <laughs> picture and just beat the crap out of this bike gang. The biker sneaks in the window. Dolores screams. Help! Just observing. This is going great for the boss. <laughs> You might have been trying to rape my friend, but <laughs> off you go. There's a plane sitting there on the beach, and so they decide to fly the plane around in the air. You know, I don't have a pilot's license, but it seems pretty simple. I just had to carry the two. <laughs> he does some maneuvers, and she starts to get a little bit seasick up in the air. Oh, Marianne, look, please help me. He kisses Marianne so that Dolores thinks that the professor and Marianne are together. The professor and Marianne. Here. Everyone meets that night at Big Daddy's. They're expecting a lot of people to be eating pie. Oh, you know where this is going. The bikers show up. The kids are there. The pies fly. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Everybody gets a pie in the face. Big Daddy's waking up. He's waking up. What does Big Daddy have to say about all this? my pendulum kiddies i feel like swinging yeah that's right go see the next movie made by this production company the lovers have been forced into each other's arms my next trip is going to be to the mariana islands yes and i'm looking desperately for an assistant he's going to marry marianne and the marianas mm -hmm. and so the movie ends but it's not over yet because we've got lots of closing credits <laughs> dorothy malone slumming it what you're doing's getting to me. Don't stop Take it, now. Craig. Don't stop now. Treat him nicely. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like the credits more than the movie. <laughs> Beach party. Did you dig it? I dug it a little bit. I dug it a lot more than I thought it was going to. 
Does the movie deliver on the promise of the title? Is this enough of a beach movie? I don't think it is. They spend their entire time at the beach. No, they don't. Well, they go to Cappy's occasionally. They spend a lot of time dinking around with this whole research angle. If the movie's called Beach Party, I want more beach stuff. I want there to be a clam bake. I want someone to almost drown. You know, we didn't mm-hmm. get any of that. Somebody gets a really bad sunburn. Ugh, I can't go to the beach anymore. Well, but this movie is the story of a professor researching students. I found that the only amusing part of the movie for me was the professor's. Story. Okay, so you like the professor. He's the only person who seemed to be going through a significant character arc. I certainly didn't hate it. I had fun. Once he shaved, most of the comedy was just removed from his character. Huh. He was still doing funny things. But the beard was such a nice comedic device. Once he was shaved, he's like, oh, who's this dope? Frankie Avalon's character is named... Frankie. Annette Funicello's character is named... Dolores. Why did they change her name? I think it was because Frankie Avalon was a bigger star. Annette Funicello was a huge star. In 63? Yes, because she had just come off the Mickey Mouse Club. Everyone knew her name because it was emblazoned across her chest the entire time. She was the hands-down star of that show. Okay. So I think there's one of two reasons why they did it. First, because she wanted to shake the Mickey Mouse Club thing and not be thought of as Annette. Or because they thought that the name Dolores was funny. This movie came out not long after a certain book about a college professor who falls for a much younger woman, Lolita, which swept the nation and Lolita's real name is Dolores. That's a bit of a reach. I think it's more likely that the filmmakers wanted to shake the Mickey Mouse Club image. Yeah. Wanted to make her a little more sexy. A fun fact about this movie, allegedly the rapper Big Daddy Kane named himself after Big Daddy in this movie. <laughs> a more recent teen movie used the anthropologist studying the teenage life angle. Mean Girls. Lindsay Lohan's character was raised by anthropologists, and she does that for the fellow teenagers. Now, if the professor was instead... A student maybe would have been better if it was this kid who had never allowed himself to be a kid. Right. And by doing the research, he becomes one. Have you ever tried surfing? Yes. Tell me about it. I was in Costa Rica a few years ago, and I would just sit on the beach and watch surfers. And I saw a lot of surfers who were older than me. And I thought, never going to have this opportunity again. Signed up for surf classes. I did one successful ride in to shore, and I just felt huge. I just felt amazing. I've never seen such shameless self-promotion in a movie for the production company that produced it. But hang on to the picture rights. American International will snap it up in a minute. Whoa! I take it then that you won't help me. Hmm? Eats its own tail. American International Records. That's a made-up record label. I'll help. Just like Roger Corman of American International Pictures <laughs> helps young filmmakers. Camp directors love these movies. Why? Because they're wholesome? Well, they're campy to begin with. John oh, Waters, okay. David Lynch. Oh, I thought you meant people who run summer camps. Summer camps. <laughs> you know, the Steinbergs. <laughs> Surf. Surf. The sun has gone down on our beach party, and the sun is about to come up on Seen It. Seen It! Seen It is the part of the show where we talk about movies that we've seen. Hey, Ellie Howard writes... Have you two seen They Shoot Horses, don't they? It was heartbreaking, unique, but also just a tad confusing. Seen it. Seen it. This movie is bleak. Oh, yeah. (laughs) If there's any movie that shows the dark side of showbiz, the darkest side of showbiz, Mm -hmm. it's this. If you watch this in a double feature with The Day of the Locust, you would have to just go out and kill yourself. (laughs) God, The Day of the Locust is the worst. I was confused as well because they talk about how many hours these things goes. And you do the math, these contests go on for a month and a half. It happened. Yes. Okay, this is a dance competition. Just how long you can keep moving with a partner. And it's during the Depression. I think every two hours they get a ten minute break. And that's it. And then there are the derbies. Oh my god, the derbies. That derby scene is so stressful. You don't think Red Buttons is that good of an actor, and he brings it in that movie. And a nice little supporting role for Al Grandpa Munster Lewis. Has a few lines. He's mostly silent, but yeah. there's Grandpa. Bandam Lock Ye Menu. Good time. Seen it. Not seen it. Oh, you should see it. It's so good. I know, I know, I know. This is a movie by the Softy Brothers. They have a big movie that's coming out in just a couple weeks, Uncut Gems. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a real big hit of the year. Yes. Robert Pattinson, 
Really trying to shed his uh, pretty boy image and succeeding like gangbusters. No one since Johnny Depp has shaken his teen image so well. Pattinson's like, all right, I was a vampire for a while, but now I'm an actor, I'm an actor, I'm an actor. This is one of those everything goes wrong in one night movies. Mm -hmm. And it's just a lot of fun. Pattinson's character has this brother who's mentally challenged, mm -hmm. severely mentally challenged. And this guy gives... Uh, performance like you would not believe it's the director really playing that role it's amazing i've never seen someone do a performance like this <laughs> benny safti turd ferguson writes you guys seen los olvidados by bunuel see si, seen it yes i have seen that too the forgotten ones as some people like to call it the young and the damned also, i believe is another title yes. another movie that's rather bleak <laughs> that movie might be the first this is what it's like to be a kid on the streets movie that's really gritty. Where it's not like, oh, we're plucky dead end kids. This is a horrible life they're living in. Tormenting legless people. Hybo, he's the main kind of villain. Yeah. But even he's not evil. Yeah. Even though he does horrendous things. He's just a stray dog. If he sees something, he takes it. If he sees another dog, he fights it. If he sees a hand, he bites it. Or not. And that makes him, in a way, the worst type of villain. Because mm -hmm. he has no humanity, and you don't know what he's going to do. Buñuel is, of course, a great surrealist filmmaker. And there's very little of that he applies into this movie. There are, there are a couple of moments. Pedro's dream is nice and surreal. Oh, yeah. There's slow-mo. There's reverse action. Chickens. Curse you, Jordan. Right. Have you seen Free Solo? Utterly thrilling. For a hundred straight minutes, I couldn't have looked away from the screen if my house was on fire. You know who could have looked away from the screen? Me. I, like, <laughs> had to do a crossword puzzle while watching this movie. I am not joking about this this is the most terrifying movie I've ever seen. I should have turned the movie off. I think I did not do myself a service by watching this movie because it was all of my fears huh. in the movie. I would never have a dream about standing on a cliff face, but now that I know what it looks like, I know someday I will. That will be the scariest dream of my life, and then I'll die, and they'll say he died in his sleep. I'm trying not to scream while watching the movie. It was... Very bad for me, and everyone should see it. Four stars. I liked it. It was a good time. <laughs> it's a documentary about a mountain climber who is doing what might be the most challenging climb in the world without any ropes. If a bird flies by and surprises him, he's dead. And he says it himself, and when he hits the ground, he will explode. You look at this and you wonder, why do these guys do it? I think the mindset of the free solo climber is, I will die by falling off a mountain. And when it happens... That's either going to be my final challenge, can I survive this, mm -hmm. or it's going to be my final thrill, falling off a mountain. There is a non-stop party going on over at our website, welcome to thebasementshow.com. You can see every episode we've ever made, over 180 of them, and there are PayPal donation buttons you can click on to help support this show. What? Donors from people such as Yust, who says, I completely forgot that my brother donated and gave me a shout-out in the Little Caesar episode. Wow, that was a long time ago. Now, six-plus years later, we still watch the show and love it. And I even got another friend hooked. If you two could give a good old thumb kiss to both Herman and Anushka, that would be lovely. Anushka? Herman? The second one? Ooh, I've never done a left-handed thumb kiss. Hmm. Is that bad mojo? And Vishal, who says, Thanks for the years of entertainment. You have the best show on the internet. <laughs> Give you one, too. There we go. Hey, if you like our show, that's great. You should tell your friends. Be like Yust. Tell your Anushka about it. To find out who the rest of our donors are and to see the contents of our mail crate, you can watch Unboxing, which is a completely separate show from this one, and it comes out this Friday. Thanks for watching Beach Party with us, and now watch this. <laughs> Dad, how can you be hungry at a time like this? Man can't live by love alone. I wish during the course of the movie, Deadhead's accent would get more and more eccentric. <laughs> and by the end, he's just speaking total gibberish. <laughs> yeah. But everyone still understands him. Yeah. If he had a twin, he'd make a good cough drop. 